Hello and welcome to the first video in our Python Vexcode VR tutorials. Now when Vexcode VR originally launched, uh, it launched with the Scratch Blocks um, interface, which is great for um, people who are new to coding or just want to quickly um, get set up and, and get programming the robot really quickly. Um, but at the time it was launched, people said, well, you know, we want a text-based environment. We want to push our students on. We want to, um, we want to teach them how to code in a text-based environment. And um, and so we've added the uh, the Python interface to the Vex Code VR uh, system. So why Python? Um, there's there's a lot of good reasons for using Python. Loads of stuff uses Python, uh, especially in the in the education sector uh, as a programming language. And it's a really great introduction to text-based programming because the syntax is relatively simple. It has easy readability and it's easy to move on to other languages uh, like C++ or whatever it might be that you want to other text based languages uh, that you want to move on to. Um, OK, so first thing I want to do is just show you how to get to the Python interface of Vexcode VR. Um, so in your browser, you'll need to navigate to uh, vr.vex.com. And when you land on the uh, on the VR page, this is what you'll see. You'll be uh, placed into the uh, the scratch blocks programming environment easy to switch to the python mode you just go to file and then new text project and you'll see there now that uh, our workspace here um, has moved to the text based environment we still have the toolbox down the left hand side um, broken down into various categories so drivetrain magnet uh, looks control sensing variables and functions um, and our blocks within each of those uh, toolbox uh, toolboxes has been changed now uh, with uh, a text-based instruction. Um, and so it's a slightly different interface, but the same overall look and feel. So just to have a, a quick um, guide around the uh, the entire Vexcode VR interface, let's start with the top here. So we can change the, uh, the language. We're adding more languages to that um, all the time. Your file menu for new projects, um, loading and saving projects. Uh, your edit menu, so um, this is slightly different to what you would see in the blocks environment. So if we switch back to blocks just for a second, um, you see you don't have a an edit menu uh, here. Um, that's specific to the uh, the text environment because it's things like change the uh, the font um, and uh, the font uh, size and find and replace and all those kind of things that you need in a in a text based environment. Um, and then we've got uh, tutorials and activities. These are the same uh, kind of tutorials and activities that you'll see in the block based language. Um, in the center here, this is where we give our um, project uh, a name. So uh, So you just uh, type in there. That doesn't actually save it. That's just giving it the name. So at that point, to then actually save your project, you'll need to go File and Save to your device. Now remember that um, Vexcode VR is a browser-based environment. So when you save to your device, it'll actually download it. I'm using Google Chrome here. Um, and so you'll see that uh, it's just uh, downloaded my file there into my Downloads folder. And that's where I'd uh, reopen it from as well. Um, OK, now moving on over to this side of the screen, we have the uh, Playgrounds button. So the Playground is the three dimensional environment in which our robot lives. Um, so the Playground environment uh, opens in the sort of condensed uh, window style, but you can expand it um, and get uh, slightly more space. Um, so shrink and expand. You can hide it temporarily just to give yourself a bit more uh, screen space to code in um, and show again. The drop down here chooses which of the playgrounds we're going to be using our robot in, so different sort of scenarios to use the robot in. Another link to the activities, that's the same as the link up here. Um, and then we also have um, a, a sort of an information panel here. So that's giving us some data from the robot, so heading, rotation, and I'll talk about all of these in the in the tutorial video specific to uh, each of those sensors. Um, further down, we've got a couple more buttons here. So play, that one is to run 
our code on the uh, on the virtual robot and this is the reset button so to reset it back to the starting um, configuration over here on the right hand side of the uh, playground we can hide and show uh, the information panel and these are our camera views so we have the top down view of our robot by default that's this button here or we can switch to uh, the three-dimensional view and you can click with your left button on your mouse and drag around to move the camera around the robot uh, and you can use your um, scroll uh, to zoom in and out as well and go back to the top view um, so that is uh, an overview of the uh, the interface um, of the uh, of the Python version of the language. It's very similar to the Blocks version um, with just a, f a few uh, little tweaks. Um, we also have uh, in this light blue ribbon here um, the monitor. So as I go through the tutorials for the various um, robot functions and the various coding functions, uh, we'll, we'll use the monitor a lot. It's where we can see a lot more in-depth data from the sensors. We can monitor things that are going on within our program that we can't otherwise see. So variable values, list values, this kind of thing. Um, and we have a, a console here where we can actually print um, uh, text and uh, other information uh, to this screen. So that's the, the monitor function. Um, and we also have uh, the uh, the help function. So the help function, when that's uh, expanded, you can also access it by clicking these little uh, help icons next to each block. What happens is if you click on one of these, you'll be given some information about that block. So it'll tell you what it does and give you an example and show you the syntax and how it should be used. And that's particularly useful when you're coding in a, a text-based environment because um, understanding the syntax of how that uh, that command is used is more important than it is in a blocks-based environment where you've got far more visual cue, uh, clue, uh, cues to how you can uh, how you can assemble your program and what blocks would fit together. Because, you know, in, uh, in a... Uh, in the scratch blocks environment you can see when uh, a boolean fits inside uh, an if statement for example because it's a it's a hexagonal block you know and the hexagonal block will only fit in the hexagonal hole so you don't have those kind of visual clues uh, visual cues in the uh, in the graphical uh, sorry in the text based programming language um so let's uh, actually start uh, looking at the interface and how we, we type some stuff in. So um, when I create a new program, by default, it's got a drive forward for 200 millimeters block in there. Um, so we can actually uh, see roughly what a program is going to look like. And you'll notice here that there's an indentation. There's one tab in. Um, and that is very important in Python. The indentations is how Python knows um, what code is inside a loop or inside a function or inside uh, a bit of logic like an if else statement and so the indentation is something that we need to pay uh, particular um, care to when we're when we're coding in python so the reason this is in indented there is one tab in is because that is part of um, the function main so our main function and we have that uh, one tab indentation there to show that that's part of that function above it um, so the block that's in there by default is drive train, train drive four, um, forward. So that's the direction that we're going to go, 200 millimeters. And I'm going to talk more about these functions when uh, we go to the making the robot move um, tutorial. But this is just to show you how to run a program. And so if I click run here, uh, my robot will move forwards 200 millimeters. And then you can see the program is actually still running, so I just uh, can click stop there to uh, to stop it from running. Um, so I can edit directly in the text window. So let's say I want to change how far uh, the robot drives forwards. I could say, hey, I want to make that um, 1,000 millimeters. Just type straight in uh, and then run it again. And the robot moves forwards uh, for 1,000 uh, millimeters. So with the, um, with the workspace, I can operate this in two different ways. I can type directly into the workspace. So let's say I want to add um, another uh, drivetrain command. I can start typing in. And you'll notice we're getting autocomplete here. So um, 
the uh, the Python has detected that I'm starting to type drive. This is the only the only um, commands we have that start with DRI will be drive train commands. And so as this starts to appear, I can continue to type drive train if I wish, or I can just press enter at that point and it will auto complete um, that part. And again, as I move on to the next bit, so dot and I put a D and these are the possible things that uh, that Python's detecting that I might want to be choosing from so yeah I'm going to want to uh, drive four actually so I'm going to choose that one and I want to drive forwards again I can type it or I can click uh, and then actually I'm going to go backwards here let's go backwards instead so we'll go back to where we came so as I start uh, it's reverse not backwards so if I start to type reverse there we go um, and I want to go back to where I came, so a thousand. And then as I put that comma in, it's offering me there do I want to go in uh, inches or millimeters? Is that a thousand inches or a thousand millimeters? Those are the two units we can work in. Well, a thousand inches would probably be a bit too far. So let's go a thousand millimeters and close the bracket. And now I can um, reset my Python environment. So you can see there, I've reset the playground and that's put the robot back to the start uh, and then as I run it we go forwards 1000 and then reverse 1000 so the other way I can edit in uh, the Python uh, editor is I can actually drag these in from the left hand side so if I wanted uh, I can I can type it in and that's good practice it's good to, to learn that and maybe sometimes actually it's quite good to hide this window here using this little button in the bottom left so that you are sort of more forced to think about the um, the commands and the syntax and, and work it out for yourself um, but I can just drag them in from here so if I want to drive forwards again I could drag that in to this point and it's pre-populated um, with some of the parameters and so we're going to go back forwards again Um, and so, and there we go. So now it's going to go forwards, backwards, forwards again. So that's the different ways that you can edit um, in this Python editor. You can uh, just type directly in um, and type the entire uh, the entire command yourself. You can use the autocomplete, so using enter to trigger those uh, those suggestions um, as they appear, or you can just drag a command in from the uh, toolbox on the left hand side. So there we go, that's a basic overview of the Python tutorial, uh, sorry, the Python interface. We're also going to do tutorials on uh, making the robot move, on the magnet and pen tools, how to display text in the, uh, in the monitor, and then we'll look at loops and logic, so all the different types of loops and if, uh, else if and else uh, logic. Um, we'll look at variables and lists and also how to create and use functions in your code as well. So look out for those tutorials which will be in the same playlist.